Hi, I'm Ermi, and I will talk a little about the participatory design conference full paper named Cultivate Creative Coexistences Towards a Critical Education for Creative Practices to Construct Fairer Human Coexistences, written with the Professor Laura, the artist Laís, the future computer scientists Matheus and Fernanda, and the Professor Roberto. We live in a world where intelligent machines are reshaping labor and human relations. In this world, creativity is considered a central theme in the debate about education. Unfortunately, there is a widely reproduced discourse that puts creative think to serve the capitalist market. This kind of rhetoric on creativity is called economic imperative. Consider creativity as a necessity to be successful leads us to no positive statement. The non-creativists will not succeed remaining for them only to work in poor jobs or even live in a massive unemployment context. It's a cruel attribution for creativity and also for education. We challenge this kind of discourse understanding that creativity is a social-cultural construction and that creativity is political. And it supports our proposition for a new critical and dehumanizing alternative model, the creative coexistences. Our practice has two main theoretical bases. The first one is the lifelong kindergarten model proposed by MIT's professor Mitchell Resnick, an interesting idea of education like in kindergarten throughout life. The approach won me over and I started to put in practice creative learning activities. However, as time went on, I started to look more critically at it. Resnick's argument for creative learning is grounded on the economic imperative, as he wrote. Success in the future for individuals, for communities, for companies, for nations as a whole will be based on the ability to think and act creatively. Resnick makes a proposition for a future where success or survival is dependent on one's creative capacities. Paulo Freire helps us to establish the possibility of alternative views towards other creativities. Freire's approach made us shift the discourse on creativity from necessary to succeed to a powerful means to support people to fight injustice and to construct a new fair world. To show that it's possible to put these ideas in practice, I will present to you the LabCraft project. The LabCraft project is a participatory action research project started in 2018 when I talked with a group of young people about transforming social assistance places called CRAS to be more creative and meaningful. We work with social educators and socio economically vulnerable young people between 13 and 17 years old. We developed in 2019 a simple methodological approach called the Workshop Trip. In this approach, all the activities occur in workshops at CRAS, or the activities occur in trip outside the CRAS. These activities were selected based on three lines. Design, where we prepared or created participatory design activities. Theater, where young people have the opportunity to tell, show, act, write and sing with their bodies through participatory theater and the theater of the oppressed. And hands-on, where we conduct traditional creative learning activities. Altogether, 15 trips and 68 workshops occurred. Unfortunately, I will bring only one scenario in this video. But you can see the other four scenarios in the full paper. We choose to talk about the Mimes Museum project. In the project, we conducted workshops and trips aiming to construct a physical Mimes Museum. The idea comes from the youth and the project has the full engagement of young people. Three experiences in the project show many valuable lessons. The first is the workshop where young people created Mimes for Consciousness to address an important topic in their lives, personal hygiene. Beyond create memes, all participants reflect on the personal and societal impacts of bad or good personal hygiene. The second is the workshop where young people planned and designed how the museum could be organized building a prototype using tangible, low-cost materials and video recording techniques. The last experience is the trip in which young people build the physical museum. Youth worked hard to construct the museum in another public space from the city, and after finish it, they and the community perceived how valuable was the transformation. After all, what are creative coexistences? The main idea we want to introduce is to associate the development of creativity with the development of critical consciousness. That is, 
The process of developing self as a creative thinker should not be dissociated of the process to become a fully citizen, enabling people to create new fair forms of human relations. We want to construct the possibilities for a creativity of the present. Now, we try to make our work more transferable by extracting four pillars for supporting educators and the practitioners to cultivate creative coexistences with the socioeconomically vulnerable youth. Pillar 1. Questioning the creative society. The first pillar invites us to question a future where being creative is mandatory to be succeeded. We should deny any people division between creativeness and non-creativeness and find the alternative path is for a world where machines and the human will coexist. Pillar 2. Freedom, Pepperton Praxis The second pillar invites us to mix ideas from Paul Freire and Seymour Papert when putting creative coexistences in practice. The liberatory pedagogical approach from Freire allows the full appropriation of what people learn to overcome oppressive experiences. Meanwhile, Papert's constructionism offers meaningful educational experience helping us to connect with young people's interests. Pillar 3. Young people as world remakers. The third pillar invites us to rethink about how we, designers, educators, percept the youth. Invite us to believe in the power of change driven by youth. Youth are agents of necessary structural changes. World remakers. As designer educators, our responsibility is to give to them the opportunity to dream. Pillar 4. Existence-centered practices. It is indignant that many young boys and girls you work with are growing up facing a coexistence guided by violence and death for them, their family, and their friends. The fourth pillar invites us to reinvent and create practices that produce coexistences grounded in life create new forms of life with the authors, challenge the violent structure experienced by us. It is important that those who defend a more egalitarian and fair world struggle for cultivating creativity from the oppressed that serves the oppressed. We must enter the symbolic and discursive dispute against a world in which survival is conditioned by creativity. And we hope that our practice and the pillars could support other works in these perspectives. If we coexist creatively, we will be able to construct new fair human coexistences. In today's world where we are dominated by fear and hate, we believe creative coexistences could be a little seed that can help us produce new kinds of courage and hope, especially for and with oppressed youth at all places. Thank you.